Today, I challenge you to use your brain just a little bit. And if you don't feel like it, uh, that's fine. You can download all these files and play around with everything I'm doing. I've been working on this new tool to generate all kinds of animations. And I came up with the circle animation that you're looking at right here. I think it's pretty interesting. You see these type of circle animations everywhere. So I thought it might be fun to go through and look at how you create the circles and some of the different, different challenges and things you need to think about while you're setting up the animations. Making a spinning circle is fairly easy. You just kind of set the position and adjust the length of the circle segment. But what if you want it to go in the opposite direction? It's not quite as easy. There's a couple different ways to do it, but you got to think about how to adjust the points and the lengths of the line. Or what if you wanted to make a loading circle like this? You need to adjust the timing and have it set up so that it works properly and repeats the way you want. Or say you want to put a gradient line around the circle. How would you do that? Or maybe even have that gradient line fade out. We're going to also look at creating a broken segment circle. Throw on some interesting effects and see what kind of animations we can make. Like, subscribe, and comment below if you're enjoying my video. I always love to hear from you. It's time to use our brains just a little bit. Um, I think there's a lot to learn here, so let's dive in and see what we can do. Okay, here we are in Fusion. We're going to create a circle, and we're going to adjust the position and length to have the circle right on one way, and then we're going to have it right on the opposite way. And you'll notice that to do the opposite way, we actually have to adjust the position and length at the same time, but there's a trick that you can do it um, real easily without having to worry about too many of these adjustments. We're going to use the same technique to create a Pac-Man animation where it'll have the mouth go, kind of going like this, so it's going to be moving the position and length Pac-Man animation. All right, here's our Blank Fusion composition. Let's drag a background node into the node area and connect the output of the background into the input of the media out, and that's going to give us a black background to work on. So for these animations, we're going to use the shape nodes, but uh, a lot of the same stuff will work with the, uh, the poly polygon mask tools as well. Click in the node area, hit control space, and search for S ellipse. And because this is a shape node, we need to use a render node to get it to render. So we hit the control space with ellipse selected and search for S render. Let's take the output of the render and put it under the output of the background. And that's going to create a merge node and put the shape right on top of our background. Okay, let's click, the, let's click the ellipse, and you'll see over here in the inspector we have some controls. There's the width and height. Um, because we want this to be a circle, we want the width to always be equal to the height. So what we're going to do is we're going to right-click on the height and choose Expression, and then take, click on this plus sign and drag it over to Width. And this is going to set the height to be always equal to the width. We'll uncheck Solid and bring up the border size, and take the length and bring that down. And you can see we can start spinning this around. Okay, so let's go through some of these different animations. First thing we're going to do is animate the length to go around this way. And then I'm going to show you how to do it backwards the other way. Because right now, by default, the length is going to go counterclockwise. But what if you want it to go clockwise? That's what we're going to figure out how to do. So let's go to the first frame. And we're going to keyframe it. And we're going to go over to frame 60 and bring the length all the way over. So this is the basic animation. And it goes around. So what if we wanted it to go the other way? This is where you need to use your brain, just a little bit. You'll see that the animation is writing on in a counterclockwise direction. To get it to go the other way, we're going to actually have to adjust the position. So let's go to the first frame, and we're going to set the position to 1. And we're going to keyframe that. And then we're going to go to frame 60, and we're going to set the position back to 0. What we're doing here is we're having the position move in relation to the length to create the effect of the line drawing on in a clockwise direction. Pretty simple, but there's actually a really uh, much easier way to do this where you don't have to think about it so much. So let's go, let's reset it to the way it was. We're going to um, reset the position to zero, and it's writing on in the other direction now. And we're just going to use a transform node after this render. With the render selected, hit control space and search for transform. Now all we need to do is the transform, and we're just going to flip it horizontally. And we have the write on in the clockwise direction without having to worry so much about the keyframing. Remove this transform for now. Let's make the Pac-Man animation. For this one, we're going to need to adjust the length and position at the same time. So let's go to frame 0 and set the position to 0.5. So the line is writing on in a counterclockwise direction. So what we're going to need to do is be adjusting the position to offset that. So as the animation goes a little bit forward and you're writing on more, we're going to pull the position back closer to 0. So the position is really going to go from 0.5, which is right here, all the way to 0 while the line writes on. So let's go to the first frame, make sure we're on 0.5, make sure the uh, it's set to 0.5, and we're set a keyframe on the first frame, go to frame 60, and then we're going to pull the position all the way back to 0. And you see we have the beginnings of the Pac-Man um, crunching and eating. Now we just need to adjust the circle style 
You see how that's going to work right there. So um, we're going to set, change the cap style and pull that in. And then we're going to bring the uh, border width way up. Bring the circle down a little bit right in there. So we just adjusted the width, height, and border to match. And obviously you could play with the uh, keyframing right here to get it to pinch in and eat those dots just the way you want. Okay, we've made Pac-Man. Now we're gonna do the spinning circle animation. Um, this one's really easy to do. Um, it's gonna basically write on as it's spinning around and you get a really interesting effect. So let's reset the circle, put the caps back on and we're gonna pull the position down. Um, we're gonna go ahead and keep the length animation. Um, let's go ahead and reset the length. We're gonna go to the first frame and we're gonna keyframe the position and the length. We're gonna set it to zero. And we're gonna go to frame 30 and we're gonna set the length to one. And that's the basic counterclockwise right on. Make this a little bit bigger. And while we're doing that, we're gonna take the position. Let's go to frame 30. And we're gonna actually be moving the position at the same time. So we're gonna set the position at frame 30 to one. So it's gonna, the position and length are gonna spin, spin around one cycle within 30 frames. And we have this kind of interesting animation here. Let's copy the ellipse in the render. And we're gonna paste another one in and merge it on top. I'm gonna to take this ellipse and let's make this one a little bit smaller. See, they're both writing on there. Now, one, one interesting thing we can do is go to frame 30. The position is one, but what if we set the position to two? It's gonna spin around two times within 30 frames. And we get this kind of look. And let's go ahead and do one more. I'm gonna copy the ellipse and the render merge it on top, and we're gonna make this one a little bit bigger. And let's make this one go a little slower. In the 30 frames, we're only, we're only gonna have it go 0.5. And there's some spinning circles. Okay, so the trick comes in is what if we want this to repeat? So we want it to spin around like this and the lines to kind of get smaller and get bigger. So let's um, get rid of these here. Let's create the continuously spinning circle. So what we're gonna be doing is have the circle, the position moving while the length is cycling between long and short. It takes a little bit of time to get it right. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to frame zero and we're gonna keyframe the position and length and set the length to zero. Let's go to frame 30 and we're gonna take the length and bring it all the way to one. That's the basics of it. So. For this one, we don't really want the circle to complete, so let's take the length on frame 30 and move it back a little bit. And let's go to frame zero and bring the length a little bit up. So we're gonna have it cycle between these two sizes while it's spinning. So let's go to the spline editor and select the length. And we're gonna click the zoom to fit so we can see the two keyframes. We're gonna highlight both of those keyframes and we're gonna hit this ping pong option. And that's gonna have the animation bounce back and forth between the short and long lines. So here's what we have now. So we just need to spin it while it's bouncing back and forth. So let's go to the position. Let's select the ellipse and the position, we had it keyframed at zero. Let's go to frame 30 and we're gonna set the position to one. And then it's gonna start bouncing back and forth. So at, at frame 30, after that we need to, so after, after frame 30 we need to have it continue to spin. So let's go to the spline editor select the position, hit zoom to fit, and these are the two keyframes for the position. And we want it to continue spinning, so we're gonna hit set relative. And that's gonna have the circle continue to spin. So you notice that when, once the circle gets to the second part, it slows down, and that's because the line length is shrinking at the same time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to frame 60, and we're gonna speed that up just a bit. Let's highlight both these frames, and we're gonna uncheck set relative. And let's go to frame 60, and we're gonna set it to three. So it's gonna go a lot faster between frames 30 and 60. A little more dynamic there. So now, now that we have that set up, let's go back to the keyframe editor. You can see that it, it goes a little bit slower here and then it goes faster. I'm gonna highlight all those frames and hit set relative. And that's just gonna have it continue that animation for us. So that's pretty basic. Let's go, back, go to the ellipse. We're gonna have it spin using a transform node now. So let's select the ellipse and we're gonna take the position and we're just gonna double click that to reset it. We're gonna be using this to do some of the other effects. So it's just gonna bounce back and forth right now. So let's out, outside of the render, select the render, hit control space and search for transform. Okay, so we're gonna essentially do the same thing. We have the length bouncing back and forth. We're not gonna use the position on the ellipse itself to do the rotation. We're gonna use this transform node. So let's hit tra the transform one 
We're going to go to the first frame and keyframe the angle. We're going to go to frame 30 and let's set, set it to 360 so it's going to spin around one time. And then let's go to frame 60 and we're going to add another 720 to this. So it's going to spin around a lot. It's going to spin around a lot faster between 30 and 60. We're going to go to the spline editor, select both of these, and hit set relative. And we've effectively created the same animation. Time to set up the gradient line. I'm just going to use a background node with an angle gradient, and we're going to match the rotation of that to match the movement of the circle. So let's add a background node. Go to the inspector and choose gradient, and let's choose some gradient colors here. Choose the first color, let's choose like kind of a red. And the second color, click the arrow and we'll choose more of a blue. And we'll put that in the viewer. So there's our gradient. Now this one, you notice the gradient goes from left to right. We want the gradient to follow the path of the circle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose gradient type angle and take the start point and move it in to 0.5. And you can see that as we follow the circle where it's gonna go from red to blue. So let's take a, with the background, we're gonna add a merge node, take the output of the render and put it into the foreground of the merge, slide this down just a bit, take the output of the merge and put it into our transform. So let's put the merge in the second viewer and the background in the first viewer. And with the merge, we're gonna set the input type to in. And let's just swap the inputs. We're gonna hit Control T and it's gonna swap the background and the foreground. And you see this is the, the gradient is right there. So we're just going to need to rotate the gradient to match the movement of that line. So let's add a transform node. And we're going to adjust the angle so that it's all blue. And that we're on frame zero. So let's click a keyframe right there. I'm going to go to frame 30 where the animation ends. And we're going to spin the angle all the way around so that we have blue on the end. And let's see what we have. So it's going to be blue and the tail is going to be the red. And that works great when we get to frame 30, but after frame 30, it stops rotating. So we just need to keep the gradient movement and rotation is matching the circle. So you can see we have our gradient spinning around that way. So we just need to continue this movement because after frame 30, it stops. So let's go back to the spline editor, select all the frames, highlight them, and we're going to hit the ping pong. And it's just going to bounce back and forth just like our line. And you'll see that the tip of the line stays blue and the tail is where you see the red come in. And we can maybe bring in the red a little sooner by adjusting the gradient here. That looks good. And when we go, um, when we go to the second transform, we're going to get the full movement. So the movement of the background is just matching the size of the line. So it stays consistent. So let's, uh, let's fade this tail out. So it's really easy to do. We're going to kind of use the same thing. We're going to take this transform and copy it. Click up here and hit Control Shift V. So we're going to use the same movement to apply a mask to fade out the tail. I'm going to take the background and copy it, and paste it, and we're going to put that into this instance right here. Let's put that in the viewer. So for this background, we just want it to go from black to white. I'm going to choose black, and the second arrow, click it, and we're going to choose white. And you can see we kind of already have a mask starting. Let's take, let's take the output of the black and white transform into the render and go to render and hit settings. And for the channel, we're gonna choose luminance. And this is gonna use the luminance from this black and white image to fade out our tail. You see it kind of starts fading out there, but we want it to fade out sooner. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the background and we're gonna take this the black um, arrow and we're gonna move it way over. And you can see there we're fading the tail as it's changing the angle gradient and we'll put it somewhere right in there. And let's take a look at what we have. Let's do a little bit more fading. All right, let's uh, reset it just a bit so we can see a little bit more of that line. And we're gonna go back to one viewer so that uh, that other gradient is not quite so distracting. Okay, so now that we have that set up, let's create um, the look where we have different line segments. So we're gonna use the shape nodes to do this. So right click and hit control space and search for S rectangle. And we're gonna take this rectangle and we're gonna merge it right in on top of this ellipse. And let's take a look at it. It's a white rectangle and we're gonna want it, we're gonna want it to be black because it's gonna mask out the parts that we don't wanna see. And we're gonna make it really thin. So go to the rectangle, controls, and bring the width down. 
That's good. And uh, outside of the rect uh, click the rectangle, hit Control Space, and search for S duplicate. And that's a shape duplicate node. And we say we want to have, uh, say, 20 copies. And you see we can mess with the Z rotation. So right click on Z rotation, choose expression. And we want the lines to be evenly spaced. We're going to type in 360, which is the number of degrees, divided by the number of copies. And that's going to space them out evenly. And you can see we're starting to get our line segments there. So if you want more line segments, you just kind of adjust that number. And let's see what we got. All right there. So the line segments are showing up here. Because what's happening is when we look at this render, and we'll go to this merge, you can see them right there. So we just need to add these lines to our mask. So let's pull these out, bring them up here, and we're going to do another S render node, another shape render, and put that in there. Okay, so this render node has our, our lines in it, and we're going to merge this in with our background mask. Let's take a look, uh, go back to two viewers. There's the background mask. We're going to take these, and we're just going to merge it right on top of there. And this is what the background mask looks like now. And now when we go to the render, we have our line segments. Okay, so, all right, so, uh, so these are our lines. Okay, so this is the background mask, and these are the lines. We're gonna merge them together, and this is what we're gonna get in viewer two here, right in the middle. And this is the mask, the black and white we set up. And there we go, we have our line segments. Go back to the end. And the line segments, it looks a little bit better when we don't have those round caps. So let's go to the, uh, the ellipse here and cap style, we're just gonna take that off right there. Okay, so that's that's the basics. We did the, the colors, the fade out, the um, segments. Now we're just gonna do a little bit, uh, something a little crazy, throw some DVE nodes on this and make an interesting animation. Really quick, watch this. With transform one selected, hit control space and type, D, and type in DVE. And we can take this DVE node and just shift this thing around to create some different perspectives. So we have it spinning there kind of flatten it out. I'm going to do another DVE node, control space, DVE. Take the output of the transform and put it into that DVE. And we're going to merge that one right on top. And all we're going to do is take the DVE and let's take a look at it. And we're just going to rotate it in a different dimension like that. And we'll do one more. Let's just copy it, paste it, take the output into the DVE and merge it on top. And we're just going to rotate it one more way. And we kind of have an interesting uh, spinning circle animation with the DVE nodes. It gives us a little perspective, a little dimension. And the last thing I did is I just threw some glow, a glow on it and some rays. So hit control space outside this merge, type rays, and take a look at it. And then we got some light rays, and you can adjust the, uh, the threshold or any of these other settings. And we have a really interesting looking animation there. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. There's really a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, covered a lot here. Also, I'm going to have all these files available as a download, so if you want to get in and play with them and try them out, um, you can download it and see how things work. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this video helped you. Um, like, subscribe, and comment below. Let me know how I'm doing. I'll talk to you soon.